Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and everyone. Thank you again for another installment of ISV Connect Live. It's my pleasure and honor to welcome Sid from Clarabridge, where we're going to have a, a great discussion about customer voice and customer analytics. So Sid, thank you so much for, for joining. Thank you, Brian, happy to be here. Great, so before we have Sid uh, do quick introductions, um, just a little housekeeping items. Um, so for those of you watching live, Thank you for making the investment in time. Um, as you see in the ticker symbol below, we love to know, A, where you're watching from. So if you're watching from somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Americas, maybe you're in Asia. Um, I doubt it because it's super late there, but I'd love to get my first Asian guest, um, someone in the Asian time zone. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, hopefully sometime in the future it will ha happen. So if you just put in the, the, the window, the LinkedIn window feed, where you're watching from, uh, we'd love to get those comments and we'll put them on screen. Also, um, throughout the conversation, uh, this 30 minute conversation with Sid, if you have any questions that might pop up based upon the dialogue we're having, also put that in the window and we'll take a few live questions from the people watching and I'll pose that um, to Sid. And then through that as well, if you find the content valuable, We'd love to have you just engage in the commentary below, either a like or a support or a celebration. Any one of those things, we would love to have that um, that engagement as well. So it's fantastic. Uh, we got a few people, Sid, before we get introductions. Juan, watching from Dallas. Oh, I know Juan. Hello, Juan. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Because uh, this is great to say, because usually we have people on and you're like, oh my gosh, we. These are people we haven't seen in a while. Juan is, um, a, is an old colleague of mine from the, the 90s at a company called MicroStrategy. So, and uh, he actually worked for at Clarabridge a few years ago. So good to, good to see you again, Juan. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks, Juan, for making the time. Uh, we have Paula watching from, uh, this is where I wish I was from, uh, <laughs> watching from Mexico, Sandy Beaches. So thanks, Paula, for, for joining us. Um, we have Eric from Fairfax, Virginia. Go Cavaliers. Thanks, Eric. Um, <laughs> We have Tyler also watching from Virginia, fantastic. Um, and then we have Brian Tomlinson watching from uh, Issaquah, Washington. So anyway, we'll continue to do that. Thank you so much. And that's funny because Brian and I, we actually, I'm from uh, Issaquah as well. <laughs> so uh, Brian uh, Tomlinson, I'll have to figure out. Uh, actually, we, we did, we have talked. I, I do know where you're living on, on near Cougar Mountain. So anyway, um, so Sid, why don't we get started? Sure. Tell, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself. I, of course, I know what Clarabridge does, um, but a little bit about Clarabridge. And then uh, the, the one question I always ask all my uh, guests is what's one thing that uh, doesn't exist on your LinkedIn profile that you'd like to share with uh, your audience? Don? Sure. No, I appreciate that. So uh, just a quick, I guess, maybe quick introduction to who, who I am and what I do. I'm, uh, you know, I'm the founder and chief strategy officer of, of Clarabridge. So thank you for giving me and us the opportunity to talk a bit about what we do. Um, over the years, I've been a bit of a data geek. I, I started out my career in analytics almost 20 years ago with a business intelligence company. Um, and then after that, started my own services business. And Clarebridge was something uh, that kind of came to me and, and my co-founders as an idea for taking analytics to the next level, really trying to understand how to, how to take unstructured data, data that really are conversations and feedback that come from people talking to each other, both you know, in real time and digitally, and using that information to drive better insights and better decision making for different kinds of businesses around, you know, around the globe. Um, what you probably don't know about me um, is that in addition to being a data geek, I'm kind of a, a, a transportation geek. And I developed a habit over the years of traveling before COVID, of course, of always trying to seek out and uh, experience mass transit in every city oh. and country that I went to. So I've been on more underground systems than pretty much anyone I know. <laughs> so. Wow, so that that is amazing. That's a, it really interesting. So, what's your favorite mass transit system around the world? Whether it be like the underground in the UK, or I don't know if you've been to Japan and you've taken the high speed bullet trains there. I what's, have, I okay. have from Tokyo to Nikko. I, I will say, probably the most interesting one, um, just because I love the artwork, is uh, is some of the underground systems in Stockholm, Sweden, are, are quite beautiful, and they look like they're just carved out of you know underground caves, which is pretty amazing. But uh, South Africa, believe it or not, has a pretty good transportation system in Johannesburg. I've enjoyed that one. I, I could I could bore you to tears. I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> so. I love it. Well, uh, I appreciate that. So, well, next time you're in Seattle, Washington, um, 
we're probably not even close to some of those other areas, but um, we are actually building a better infrastructure as well. I mean, the West Coast, as you may know, is like so a little bit farther behind than our East Coast side of people. But anyway, uh, thanks for sharing that. That's a that's a great that's an interesting fact. So before we uh, I kind of have you do a quick introduction on Clarebridge, let me do a quick a couple of other shout outs of people watching. So Brock, thank you uh, from Bellevue, Washington, another uh, Washingtonian. Uh, we have uh, Chris uh, watching, uh, watching from uh, D.C. near Virginia, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we have Lorraine. and uh, Glad that you got unfrozen, Lorraine. You're watching from Kentucky. Fantastic. Thank you for making the time. And we actually have a few people from uh, uh, South America, uh, Sid. Great to see. We have uh, Danilo uh, from Sao Paulo, one of my Fantastic. favorite cities. Uh, yeah. I love going to uh, Brazil. Um, and then Guatemala, a place I've never been to, but Enrique, thank you so much for watching from Guatemala. I think this is my first uh, person watching from Guatemala uh, on the on the show. And then we have um, uh, wonderful Lucy watching from um, Stroud, Gloucestershire, uh, UK. So thanks, Lucy, for making the time. Okay, so let's get to the meat of it. Uh, so, sure. so tell us about Clarebridge. Like, what um, what what does Clarebridge do, and mm -hmm. then what are the joint outcomes we we we, we solve and, and and do together? Sure. Uh, so Clarebridge, the best way to think about Clarebridge is we have a solution that provides organizations with customer experience analytics, or we call it CXA for short. And what customer experience analytics are is really the uh, distillation of the features, the behaviors, the sentiment, the intention, the emotionality, even, even the effort that customers express when they're doing business with and talking to companies. Um, we do that by using uh, an AI powered language and understanding set of algorithms um, to basically take raw interaction data. Again, think calls, emails, chats, agent notes that might be in a CRM system, feedback from surveys that typically are um, solicited you know, on a, on a relationship basis or after a phone call or interaction. We take all of that unstructured data and we apply these AI algorithms to understand all the different features that predict um, the kinds of outcomes that are good, you know, sales, loyalty, uh, uh, you know, effort, uh, financial or cost benefits to an organization. And we also look at the negative outcomes that potentially might end up having a negative impact on the business. And by using language and using this sort of AI powered understanding, we can help companies more proactively act on the voice of the customer and improve positive outcomes and reduce negative outcomes. And we do this for, you know, companies, big companies, big retailers, banks, insurance companies, healthcare companies, because they've increasingly become dependent on the language of the customer to really determine how to best create good and bad outcomes. Particularly in 2020, when you know a lot of businesses were disrupted by COVID, and a lot of the traditional in-person interactions were replaced with phone calls, with digital interactions through things like chat and messaging, and through really a dependence on the kind of digital transformations that p businesses were forced to accelerate to, to stay in touch with customers. We, we provide that kind of vital link to connect what people say with ultimately how well a company supports what company, what customers need so that they can create value and loyalty. That's fantastic, Sid. And it's so apropos, especially now because we're still in a pandemic, we're still working from home. That rich information to understand the customer journey and the customer experience across no matter what industry you're in yep. really provides that value. And so the other component, of course, is that when you pair that with a customer relationship management solution mm -hmm. like dynamics, then you get all that rich information, that data that really, and then with the tooling you have, correct, pulling it all together. Exactly right. I mean, when you think about one of the challenges that, uh, that companies are dealing with today is that your customer is no longer interacting with you through one channel, right? They're not just going into a store or just making a phone call, right? The customer journey is truly omni-channel. And so every interaction could be on different channels, different technologies. It could be a phone call, it could be a chat, it could be filling out a survey after walking into a retail location. And all of that information ultimately needs to be distilled into a, an understanding of that customer's journey, that customer's intention, ultimately that customer's outcome that generates money and loyalty or that generates you know, inefficiency and churn. And so what we do, and what frankly I think we do really well with, with Microsoft, is we collect all those journey sort of insights across all those channels, we connect them to the customer understanding that lives in, in Microsoft Dynamics. And together, we can then uh, build better processes, better actions, and frankly, better understanding 
to be able to build better relationships with those customers. That's great, Sid. Can you comment a little bit? So what if someone wasn't using Clarebridge today, what is it very manual? Like what give 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 people an experience for people who are listening to this and going, okay, wow, this this sounds great. Like paint a picture of what, what would that look like if they weren't using Clarebridge? Yeah, yeah. It, it would be very dark days indeed. But <laughs> uh, the best way to think about it is is without a, a solution like Clarebridge, which really acts as that customer experience um, hub, right? That brings everything together. It's not uncommon for, for businesses to have lots of different silos, right? So they might have a, a silo for their surveys. They might have a silo for their chats. They might have a silo for their contact center. And you might be able to locally optimize the interactions in that one channel, but it misses the opportunity to understand, you know, an increasingly common problem in most organizations where a customer might try to self-serve and then they might interact with a chat bot and then they might talk to an agent via chat or phone call, right? And that's that's four different interactions that in a silo is not connected, right? Clarebridge connects the dots and it can tell you when one channel is not working and creating time and effort for the customer and frankly creating cost for the company, right? Whereas those siloed systems won't won't give you that that omni-channel insight. And that's really where the power of a system like Clarebridge is, is you break down the silos and you create a unified view of that customer, regardless of where they are in their journey and regardless of what channel they're using. Yeah, you know, that's great, Sid. Yeah, I mean, because it applies not just on um, when people think about this, they think, oh, it's the customer service experience. And it's much more than that, because you can imagine taking that even earlier in the sales cycle and the marketing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, even before a customer is a customer, if they're a prospect and they're online you know, and they're asking questions or they're responding to a marketing campaign, that is part of the customer journey, right? And so you don't want to just think of that as outside the scope of what you should be caring about. It's actually critical to and you know, people form opinions about how good a company is, whether to do business with them in those early stages. And we, we collect that information absolutely as part of our solution. Fantastic, Sid. So tell us a little bit about what's been the, the journey with the Microsoft ecosystem. Of course, thank you for the investment because we know when people, especially organizations like Clarebridge are going out there and there's choices out there to mm -hmm. have partnerships and to be part of an ecosystem. Tell us about the, the Clarebridge journey working across, of course, our team on the ISV side, the business development team, R&D, marketing, because, of course, when you and I start to get to, uh, start to have conversations, of course, the richness of all the people you've been engaging with and your teams have been engaging with Microsoft. T tell a little bit for the people listening who also are maybe like Clarebridge and thinking, gosh, do I make an investment in the Microsoft ecosystem? Tell us a little bit about what has that journey been from a partnership? Sure. No, I, absolutely. I, well, first of all, I mean, just out, out front, I'll say the, the journey has been a very good one. I think we found Microsoft very, very um, easy to work with. And I think from the earliest conversations, I think we had a, um, a pretty good alignment of where we could drive some real value together. Um, we've had a, a, a view for, a long, well, for, for at least a year or two now that the power of what we do is amplified when we have partners that can connect to Clarebridge and that we can connect to technically and that together the system is a one plus one equals three solution, right? And in the case of Microsoft, there's sort of two very, I think, important touch points. One is you've got a, a solution called Customer Voice, which is a very high function, um, easy to deploy, you know, high value solution for feedback collection, for survey collection. Um, but it's not just a survey platform, it's intricately linked to the, the greater Microsoft Dynamics 365 solution. So information gets collected, it gets annotated along with the larger customer records and dynamics. And so what we've done is we've created this sort of solution where we can solicit data from surveys powered by customer voice. We run all of our analysis and enrichments on it. We push that data back into the Microsoft Dynamics ecosystem where you effectively own that, that collective view of the customer. And we together create this sort of mutually reinforcing solution. So technically it's very strong. From a business perspective, um, we found your team very easy to work with. We've done some great joint solutioning. We're both investing in basically connecting the technologies so that they work seamlessly together. And then you know, just being able to talk about what we do through events like this one have been fantastic. So again, really, really appreciate all the work that uh, your teams and our teams have done together in the last few months. It's been great. No, I appreciate. Thank you so much. That that is really great to hear because it is uh, sometimes staggering for new organizations, especially how big Microsoft is, to go through that navigation and to start this journey. And it's been great so far, which we'll talk about. Not to ruin the surprise at the end, but the call to action of all something that 
can that people listening to this potentially can take advantage of. So yeah. uh, before I get to the next question of the the kind of examples, a quick shout out to uh, Nitya, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name uh, wrong, but uh, for Virginia, so thank you so much. And again, I'm on with Sid from Claridge. If you have any questions as we go through um, this conversation, please put put them in the IM window. And again, gives us an opportunity as maybe it sparked a a question in your mind of something that uh, Sid just said as he was explaining the value and the capabilities. Please put in the uh, please put that in the window. So, Sid, so when we think about a kind of a stories that exist and you mentioned like what are the outcomes we drive what are some uh, real examples that you've seen with what we've done so far granted i know it's been early but what are some of the examples you've seen so far where these conversations and these outcomes that you're describing are piquing the interest of customers mm -hmm. around the world that like oh my gosh well we have this issue how do we how do we get, get better at understanding the customer journey as you, you said what's some of the examples that you've seen uh, so far and as as we've started to work together yeah no, i know i can give several i think that are quite interesting so we've um you know we've rolled out this partnership around the globe so we're we're working together here in the united states as well as in europe on a number of, of joint opportunities one that comes to mind just recently is a um is a retailer that's making a lot of investment in um e-commerce transformation right like a lot of companies in the last year they um they really pushed all their efforts into uh, digital sales, uh, you know, digital e-commerce and digital support and um, moving away from a more traditional in-store and kind of after shopping, uh, you know, distribute a survey. And that's sort of the extent of customer feedback. What we've done is we've created a very powerful solution that joins Microsoft Dynamics CRM with the customer voice solution, which is being used to provide both relationship and transactional feedback. And then we're mining a wide range of social assets because they do a lot of online marketing and social media. They get social reviews of their products. And so the system is really a full sort of scope customer experience and insights platform for this company that's taking on some very established retailers, you know, in their markets and doing really well. And I think that together we're going to be able to help them not just disrupt their business digitally, but disrupt the market that they're in. Uh, and it's a, it's a fashion apparel retailer. Uh, that we work with. I'm seeing similar interest in some of our larger um, health insurance companies. Uh, Microsoft's done a lot of work recently working with health providers and, and, and insurers, and we do a lot in that space as well. And I think the combination of Clarebridge, Microsoft um, is able to disrupt a lot of the, frankly, I would call them higher cost and less nimble solutions that are out there in the healthcare space. So I expect to see a lot of growth in that space this year as well. No, thanks. It and it is amazing the journey. Like when you mentioned the retail side, that whole who would have thought um, that you could order something online and then drive up in your car and have someone put something. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I would have thought of that. And all these retailers have done that transformation. And exactly your point where today, and you touched on it, where people just think, "Oh, I'll do a survey and that's it. I'm done." Yeah. And someone has to do such manual effort to do that. But everything, like you said, the enrichment of because that data is one silo plus social plus all these other things. That you get this full picture that then your you, Clarebridge can then really leverage that tooling and all that data yep. to give that information back. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with a survey. I mean, a survey is an interesting, you know, data point or signal, but it's only one, right? And oftentimes it's a very small number of people that fill them out, particularly in, you know, in the 2020s. You know, most people, uh, I don't want to get ageist on me, but, you know, most people under 20 probably aren't filling out a lot of surveys, but they're more likely to post about something. And so you want to take a big view, right? And you want to be able to mine the chats and understand the calls and understand what's going on in social media. That's really how you get the holistic understanding of what's going on in your business nowadays. Yeah, so. exactly. I think it's well said. Um, the multi-channel, not just for the customer, but the multi-channel of where's that information, the telemetry coming from, where all that feedback that might be feeding into it. That's right. So it looks like I don't have any questions coming in from the the thread. So um, one thing, again, um, not that we potentially can end slightly early, but when we think about like, how do people uh, learn more or mm -hmm. get, getting started? If, if, if any if people listening and watching it go, wow, this seems pretty interesting. Uh, either they're using dynamics or not, or they're not, they're, they're utilizing some kind of surveys capabilities. But when they think about the broader things, they give a little bit about like, how do people learn more about uh, just this this partnership and and the scenarios that we're we're referring to and talking about. 
Well, yeah, I'll, a couple of things I'll say, and I know that um, we've provided to, to you and the team, both Microsoft and, and uh, Clarebridge, we've developed some materials that talk about how to adapt um, the contact center you know, to use some of these great technologies from Microsoft and Clarebridge. They should be available um, after this event, as well as a data sheet that talks about how the solution works really to drive transformational CX and, uh, and customer service improvement. Um, I would love to also just mention that uh, we've worked out a fairly, I think, compelling offer for, for organizations interested to use ClareBridge with Microsoft. And that is that in combination with Microsoft, we're bringing an offer to the market on anyone who commits to a multi-year opportunity where you get one free year of survey distribution that's powered by the Microsoft customer voice solution, along with one free year of survey analytics, which is powered by, uh, by ClareBridge. So this provides an opportunity for companies to very quickly see the value of joining surveys with other sources with Microsoft into this really compelling solution. And we would love to, you know, if there's interest, feel free to, uh, to kind of engage with us and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. That'd be great. No, that's great, Sid. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, so we did uh, actually, it's great. We did have a couple of uh, questions that now popped up and I think this oh, perfect. Is valuable, so it's perfect. So, um, uh, Kaloyan, and I apologize, I'm not mispronouncing your name. I'm not sure what, sure why it shows up as uh, just a generic LinkedIn user, but thanks for asking the question. A question is, can you talk a little bit about how you're using natural language generation for customer solutions? Yeah, there's, a, I mean, there's a lot to that question, but I, I appreciate the question. The best way to think about it is when you use NL, NL, um, NLG or NLU, um, we actually uh, sort of two two steps. Step one is we take language that's coming from your interactions with your customers. And we extract a lot of the features of language that are the kind of markers of, of loyalty, of effort, other things. So we, we will score an interaction, a sentence for effort. We will identify the topics of a conversation. We'll identify whether the customer or if there's an agent on a two-way conversation is, is expressing um, emotion, right? Or they're, they're explaining that they're getting the answer to their questions or they're not. And all of those things become really important to diagnose whether an interaction is producing a positive outcome or a negative outcome, or whether this is in fact a customer that's likely to have problems later on because they haven't been able to you know, get what they need from a sales or a service perspective. So that's natural language understanding. We also have the capability, if, um, if, if, if we're looking at many, many different interactions, uh, and often you know, a phone call or a chat can go on for 10, 20, 30 minutes, we can take a long form interaction and we can actually summarize it using something called natural language generation. And it would be able to say, you know, Sid and Brian had a 20 minute conversation. They talked about these topics. They, uh, they got excited about this topic and they ended on this note, right? That's the concept of natural language generation. And the importance of natural language generation is we can take a long form interaction, summarize it to the key points, and then push that information back into Microsoft Dynamics, right? So that that is now a record in a, you know, of a customer interaction between a customer and agent. And that information can reduce the time it takes for someone that's actually a uh, Dynamics user for having to do after call to work or after, you know, after support interaction management. So it creates efficiencies for the, you know, um, for the, for the Dynamics user. And it also creates a compelling and sort of high quality summary of the interaction, right? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Kelly. And hopefully they answered your question. Uh, and it, it, it's great, uh, Sid, it, it sparked a few more. So oh, yeah, great. Let me, let me put a few more up here. So Lorraine had asked, uh, and thanks, I think Lorraine was coming, dialing from Kentucky. Uh, if I'm already using Dynamics, how long does it really take ClareBridge as an omni-channel solution? To That's a great question. And hi, Lorraine. I know Lorraine, she's a, a, a good friend of the company going back a few years as well. So, um, so the answer is it really, uh, it, it's not long. I think that generally speaking, we've seen solutions be turned on from decision to, to build to actually being live in anywhere from sort of two to four months. And, and the reason that it can be shorter or longer is a function of whether it's just connecting the two systems or whether there's going to be a lot of other data that we want to connect to. So, but the, the actual connection itself between the two systems is developed, is enabled through what we call a connector. That part of it is literally flipping a switch. It's not a lot of work at all but building out the other stuff is really a function of the scope of the project. Um, but the partnership has made that connection very, very seamless and straightforward. Great, thanks. Um, let me flash up, so, so Jonathan, thanks for uh, adding this. This is just another uh, component for anyone wanting to know a little bit more about the partnership joint offer. 
It's actually an official uh, portion on the Clara Bridge website that talks about it in detail. So th thanks, Jonathan, for posting. Um, we have, I think, one more question um, mm -hmm. that, that, that came up. Um, and this is from, I think, uh, coming from our friend in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. So unstructured data are gold. Every interaction generates huge amounts of data we cannot collect on a standard survey. How are, how are the common data you use within Microsoft Dynamics to deliver a more personalized experience? Sure, so that's another interesting concept. So we, we think of using this kind of customer experience data in sort of two use cases. One is if you collect all the data, you can analyze it and you can look for issues, right? That you might wanna fix. A lot of people having a particular issue means maybe I have to fix a product. A lot of people having interactions that are negative with a particular topic or a particular agent, there's an opportunity to improve the knowledge management system or to coach the agent. But there's also a use case where if I see an opportunity, maybe people are asking questions about a product for sale, I can create a marketing campaign and run that through Dynamics, right? Or if I see a particular issue that I see as an opportunity to, um, to keep people from churning, I can proactively reach out to customers and tell them about you know, how to solve a problem before they even call me. So I can use insights to power outbound campaigns to my customers for marketing, for support, even for sales, as well as using the insights to drive, continuous insights to drive, you know, what I would describe as outer loop solutions, right? Fixing a product or fixing a, a website or fixing a marketing campaign, because I'm seeing a lot of concerns about it. Uh, the, the key is it's not just about finding insights, it's about using the insights to drive actions and using those actions to drive ROI, right? And ROI can be measured in terms of, I'm gonna optimize something to drive more revenue, I'm gonna optimize something to, to save time and money, or I'm gonna optimize something to drive a successful result from an investment, like a marketing campaign or uh, a product launch or some sort of a, a service quality improvement initiative. Ultimately, you wanna use CX to power the actions that drive ROI in your business. And that's really what we try to do with our analytics and with our integrations is to connect the dots so people can realize those benefits. No, thanks, Sid. And thanks, uh, Danello, for the question. I think, uh, so with the three minutes we have left, Sid, maybe the, the final question I would ask you, unless someone asks another question and the thing. So, so we know there's other alternatives out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about the ecosystem, but in general, there's other course tools that do this analysis and all that stuff. What sets ClaraBridge apart with Dynamics? Um, maybe that would be a, a good kind of- a, Yeah, no, I appreciate uh, the question. Structure, so. so, you know, I think that we we have uniquely, I think, taken the approach for as long as ClaraBridge has been around, that we believe that customer experience is powerful when it is omni-channel, right? So from the beginning, we have built connectors to the the widest array of, you know, of feedback, of social, uh, of interaction technologies like CRM, like Microsoft, like call technologies and switches. And as a result, we have cast the widest net. We have the most ability to distill and understand the customer across all channels. Other solutions that are out there in the market tend to be locally optimized based on a lot of the history of those companies, right? Speech vendors are not, not bad at manualizing speech, but not so good at other things. A lot of the vendors that grew up in the survey space are good with survey collection and analysis, but they kind of fall short when it comes to understanding sources that aren't part of their ecosystem. And I think the final piece I'd add is that the integration of analytics to operational systems like CRM, like, like Dynamics, is really when you create the most powerful solution. We have built a very, very compelling integration. It's a two-way integration that connects to the surveys, that pushes to the Dynamics, and that powers not just insights, but actions and campaigns, which is a truly kind of um, powerful solution. It's, it's insights to actions to operationalization. And that's something that I think is unique with the ClaraBridge uh, solution. And frankly, the, the partnership with ClaraBridge and Microsoft. Wow, well, what, what a great way to end. So <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so before I, I, I wrap up uh, the call, any other uh, uh, last minute uh, things you'd like to close out or provide as uh, insight for people watching. And thank you for everyone watching. It looks like we had quite a number of people. It looked like 45 plus people watching live. So thank oh, you fantastic. Yeah. for everyone uh, watching. So Sid, any, uh, any, closing, any closing thoughts you'd like to add? No, I, well, I would just, I'll reiterate just because I, I made, it, made the comment earlier, I wanna make sure that people are reminded that we do because of our partnership have, a, I think a unique offer where um, companies or organizations interested in sort of seeing the power of the joint solution 
um, you know, please reach out to your Microsoft representative or to reach out to, to ClaraBridge. And uh, when when we work together, we offer a multi-year opportunity. If you um, if you work with ClaraBridge and Microsoft, we'll offer one free year of Microsoft customer voice, survey distribution, and one free year of survey analytics as part of an omni-channel solution powered by ClaraBridge. And uh, we look forward to, to learning you know, more about people's interests and working together. Yeah, sounds good, Seth. And, and so you can find either of us. Of course, we're on LinkedIn. We're doing this live. Exactly. So if you have any questions, feel free to connect to any one of us. Send us yeah. a message over LinkedIn, a message, a connection request, et cetera. So we do this every, uh, so again, for everybody's benefit, we do this every uh, Monday at 8 a.m. So next week, we have a uh, IS, another global ISV called Nice and Contact Systems. Um, we have a few gentlemen that are going to share a point of view. But I want to thank you again, Sid, for allocating time, A, ClaireBridge, and yourself for the investment of the partnership. We truly appreciate it. We look forward to seeing across our teams all this amazing joint success we'll see. And um, thanks for uh, kicking us, kicking our uh, last Monday of April. It's hard to believe, like, oh, my gosh, we're almost in May. <laughs> Last month of, of April with this uh, great insight and uh, take care and looking forward to hearing more stories as uh, as you as hopefully when we get to travel again, new opportunities for you to, to share stories to tell me, hey, Brian, I just found this new uh, mass transit thing that uh, I never experienced. <laughs> Happy to do that. Happy to do that, Brian. And thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Be well. And we'll talk again uh, next Monday at 8 a.m. Take care. Thanks again, Sid. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.